Hi, Sarah here with you and today I want to talk about the hardware of um, the programs that is involved in making a comic book and uh, what the things you should keep aware of when you're working with a program like the Photoshop CS5 because it is really big and it needs a lot of RAM to be able to operate on your computer. First, if you're getting a new computer, I advise you to go and buy a normal PC because it is a hard worker not compared to the laptop and you can easily upgrade parts whenever there's something new like a bigger RAM or um, a new processor so you can able to play around with it and just improve it to become better. If you are going to buy a laptop new, um, then I advise you to buy something that has Core i5, uh, either generation 1 or 2, I prefer the second generation of course. If you can buy something higher like Core i7, it's even better. Um, something that will have 4 gigabytes of RAMs or higher. And you need to make sure that the Vega card must support something called the Charter 3.0 and OpenGL 2.0 or higher. These are the minimum requirements for a program like the uh, Photoshop CS5. And uh, the CS5 has the animation feature in it. So you are going to work on making videos if you are going to work with some of the, uh, I guess, animations via Photoshop so you are going to render your videos or render and the result will be a video so you need something that will have a uh, strong memory and processor to be able to do that but yet again I advise you to buy a computer I'm not gonna say you know you should buy a Mac or not because it's up to the person whether they want to buy a Mac or not in Egypt people prefer to use the normal Microsoft because a normal big PC Mac would start from 20,000 pounds and people who buy it are only people who are working in the media because it has the final cut on it but other than that you know uh, the rest of the programs design programs and stuff is available both on Microsoft and on the Apple software so uh, it's up to you if you want to buy a Mac or uh, a normal PC if you're going to buy a laptop I advise you to go with um, fan underneath the laptop because this stuff seriously and talking about the media programs put a lot of uh, heat on the motherboard so you want to cool it as much as possible so the motherboard won't be fried if you are rendering a video on the Sony Vegas or something you feel that the fan all of a sudden becomes insane it become it it makes this sort of loud a loud noise is because the heat on the motherboard is too high so it's trying to cool it off so if you buy a fan underneath the laptop it will keep it cool because it will air all underneath the laptop there it will also keep it elevated there's uh, I guess holes inside of the fan uh, table thing that I got so it will keep it away from being put on the table when the table is warm um, there will be no air to cool down the laptop but this is elevated it has holes so it's not really put on a heated surface so it will keep cool um, if you have a laptop I really advise you to get one it's cheap anyways um, and if you're working with something like the Photoshop CS5 the reason why you need to get something with a 4 gigabyte or upgrade your computer to a 4 gigabyte RAM is because when the Photoshop is working it operates on your RAM memory. Usually it will take from half to three quarters of the full memory of your computer depending how much um, RAMs it has. I remember I had an old computer but it was really old I got in 2005 when I tried to put on the CS5 on it it wouldn't work. I have worked on my computer my PC has two RAMs of gigabytes and um, it's it's uh, a bit older than um, and I a core i3 processor it has the processor before the core i3 it sort of worked but it take take all of the memory of my computer so if I tried to operate anything near it the computer would just shut down Photoshop saying there's not enough memory to uh, proceed with this next task so this is one of the reasons why now I'm working with the CS5 on my laptop if I want to work with um, with something with the Photoshop 
then uh, if on my PC I would go for the CS4 because that is what my computer, my old PC would handle. I'm planning to upgrade it soon uh, when I have enough money. I want to get a new processor and I want to get higher RAMs so my computer will be able to handle uh, all the process of Photoshop or montage or stuff. Um, anyways, when you open up your CS5, there's a lot of options you have. Something called from the preference menu. You're able to set how much the CS5 is able to consume memory so it would operate or not. You know, for example, it works between 1400 megabytes and 250 megabytes of RAM. That's just for example. This is like the range that it will work and will not stop or close on you or freeze and all that. So if you set it in uh, between the middle, it will work. Some people would set it to the highest thing, like if you have 2 gigabytes or 3 gigabytes of RAM and uh, it's set to um, operate Photoshop at 3 gigabytes, it will consume all of your RAMs. And if you try to work with another program, it will tell you, sorry, not enough memory. Uh, so you need to adjust your RAMs from the Photoshop. I believe it's uh, from file preference or something. I really don't remember, but I will uh, show you in a separate video all this stuff, the basic, uh, I guess, operating uh, requirements for Photoshop CS5. I'm talking about the CS5, not the previous one, so uh, I hope they keep that in mind. Another thing, if you are going to plan to work with more than the Photoshop and the Illustrator and all that fun programs, like if you are going to work with the Sony Vegas Pro because you're promoting your work in videos or you're making flash animations or stuff like that, I really advise you to work with a PC. But if you have a laptop, then here is what you do other besides than getting a fan. Make sure that before you're editing your work that the laptop hasn't done a lot of um, tasks so it's not overheated so when it renders your work it won't put more heat on the motherboard so make sure that you give your computer for example if you have finished all of your files and you're just waiting to render them give your computer a 30 minute break just put it down on sleep mode or shut it down or something once it cools down go and render your work this way you'll be able to, um, I guess, try to not overheat your computer as much as possible. I made this video because I know that about 70% of my audience are teens or people in high school who wants to graduate and uh, have a dream of publishing something. Or if you're even still at college and you, you're planning to start something after you finish college uh, that relates to this field. So I just made this video for you guys. It's a bit confusing. I know all the amount of information on this video. So if you have a question or something, leave it in the comments. I'll try to reply to you. I don't have all the information, but I do have a bit. So uh, I would like to help you with that little amount of info that I have about the hardware and the software part. But this is just related to the hardware part of uh, I guess of the operating computer that you're working with to produce your comic yeah that sort of wraps up this video again if you have any comments or questions leave them in the comments I'll take a look and if they have a lot of questions I'll make a video to answer all of your questions but I will again reply to you in the comments that's it. I'll see you in another uh, video, or in this case, uh, part three, and uh, I guess the start of working with your comic and the things that you should avoid and all that fun stuff. So take care and stay safe. Bye.